the offer my congratulations to the, the association for the extensive work that you've been doing over the last year or so. Some of you may not know this, but the first association of St. Lucians was really started about 30 something years ago, in 1970s, whatever. And um, it was at the time Ludom, called Ludom. It was St. Lucians and Dominicans because of our common Creole identity. And I happen to be one of the, um, the founding presidents. I had the distinction of almost being impeached, however, by the association. Because one night we had a fete down in, in um, Free Hill, and the lights went off, and it became a whole part of a joke session. And I put a stop to it because we had guests from other islands there. And the guys felt I was not being patriotic enough as a Lucian to stop a part of life. Anyway, so I've been asked to speak to you about um, on the theme of love of self, love of country, a beacon of change. And I want to start by quoting a Russian writer, Dostoevsky, who, who said, How can you have lived and not have a story to tell? How can you have lived and not have a story to tell? Think about this. What is your narrative? That's essentially what this, this um, quotation is asking us about. And um, it speaks to the dichotomy between self and country. Because for many people, love of self and love of country are two distinct things. And we live in an age of extreme selfishness, where people believe that you have to first check for yourself. Um, there are a lot of historical reasons for that. But you have, if you ask yourself, what is the narrative? How can you have lived and not have a story to tell? Whose stories have been valued over time? What are the stories that we have, we have given esteem to? They are never stories of selfishness. They have never been the narrative of just self. It has always been a narrative of selflessness. So for example, whether we talk from biblical times to contemporary times, it is all about the narratives in history that endure are the stories of those who have looked beyond themselves to the other, to what they can do for their community, what they can do to preserve certain timeless values justice, equality, truth. These are the narratives that have stood up. And so, part of the challenge for you young students is to ask yourself, how do you define your narrative? How do you define yourself in the context of your times? When I was a student at Keyville, those were the, the, this was the height of the Cold War, in fact. Um, when I, was, I started doing a master's at Keyville and then the Grenada Revolution happened and I abandoned my master's to go work in the revolution. Um, these were the times when ideology was a big thing. You, you could hardly have been a young person in the 70s or the 80s if you were not part of either the black power movement or you felt that you were inclined to be a socialist. Because that was part of the political movement and it was, it was a trend but at least it gave us something to look to beyond ourselves. Whatever your political views may be, ideology in the 70s was a time of polarization, but it was also a time when young people had a sense of idealism. I, growing up in Form 6 in St. Lucia, uh, Monsignor Patrick Anthony was one of the, the mentors who helped us to look beyond ourselves to our community and to our country, and to develop a sense of service. So the Folk Research Center, which I'm sure all of you Lucians here would have known about, was actually um, the product of the work of Father Anthony, working with sixth form students in the college, the convent, and um, in, the, in the Catholic Church in St. Lucia. But, so the challenge here for us was, in trying to define ourselves. And Franz Fanon, who was a Martinican um, psychologist and philosopher, said that every generation must, must discover its mission and it must either fulfill it or betray it. 
every generation must discover its mission and either fulfill that mission or betray the mission. And I think a huge challenge for you young people today is what is your mission? Are you going, do you know what your mission is? Have you defined that mission? And are you going to fulfill that mission or are you going to betray it? Speaking for the generation that preceded you all, I think in many respects, we have failed. We have failed. Because every generation is supposed to stand on the shoulders of the preceding generation and they are supposed to pass a torch that helps that new generation move higher and better and faster than the preceding generation did. But if we look at the Caribbean today, we have to ask ourselves, what is the result of our work? Right here at UWI, when I was on campus, there was a real sense of regional solidarity and unity. Yes, there were differences and you know, petty antagonisms between countries, but especially from where I sit in CXC, as I travel increasingly around the Caribbean, what I see is not a, an acceleration of the movement to regional unity, but I see an increasing fragmentation, an increasing fragmentation. And the irony of the thing is, as times get more difficult, as the global inter, um, and international situation becomes more competitive and more brutal, rather than unite and pool our resources together, we are separated and trying to fight in our separate spaces. I think it was Martin Luther King who said, that we must either learn to live together as brothers or perish separately as fools. And we are well on the way to perishing separately as fools. So part of my message to you here is to, is to ask, ask yourself, what is the mission of your generation and how are you going to fulfill that mission? Let's be clear. The gener many of the generations who preceded us did fulfill their mission. If we take a look at the panorama of Caribbean history, in the, from the time of slavery, the generation emerging from slavery fulfilled their mission. They moved themselves to emancipation. They liberated themselves from slavery. The generation after slavery in the post-emancipation period fulfilled their mission of moving beyond colonialism. The next generation fulfilled their mission of moving to independence so that we could stand on our own feet. The generation later then failed because the, the Federation project came to nothing. We ended up going our separate ways. But the mission of independence was accomplished. And we have to ask ourselves today what is going to be that guiding thing? What is that guiding thing that will help us to fulfill our mission? What is the guiding thing? In my time, ideology was a big thing. There was a French philosopher who, after the collapse of the, the Soviet Union and the end of the Cold War, said that God, he wrote a book called God is Dead, Marx is Dead, and I'm not doing too well myself. Because he was really signaling that, you know, well, it's, it's the end of all isms. But the end of isms does not mean the end of principle. The end of isms is not the end of principle because there are enduring values that regardless of what your political belief is, regardless of what your religious orientation is, these values will continue and they will endure. The need for justice, the need for equity, these things will continue. And so, part of the challenge is to ask yourself, and this is unique to you, young people, because that whole thing, as I said earlier, about asking yourself, what is your narrative, is not an easy thing right now. Because before it was easy enough to define yourself by some ism or by some religion, but now there are so many identities that you now face. Think for a minute and ask yourself, what is the meaning of identity in this age of Facebook? What is identity in the age of Facebook? In my time, on campus, it was very easy to say, I'm a Lucian, this person is a Grenadian. Very easy to say, I'm a SOSI student, this is an art student. 
identity now has become far more complex in the age of Facebook. There's a guy who I recommend that all of you read called Seth Goodwin. I think he's a professor at Oxford who wrote a book on tribes. And Seth Goodwin says that in this 21st century, we no longer have clear identities. We all inhabit, we all inhabit a series of tribes. And we can belong to multiple tribes at the same time. So one of your, your nationality is a tribe, right? Your religious affiliation is a tribe. Your political orientation is a tribe. But in the age of Facebook, there are all kinds of other tribes. You can be online and be part of all kinds of communities. Goodwin spoke about um, attending, being asked to speak at a convention of people worldwide who, take, who make... Um, balloon sculptures. Now, can you imagine there's an association for persons who take balloons, like the long balloons, and make dogs and different shapes? There's an association for that. And if you go on the internet now, you can find an association for almost every interest. There are people who collect thimbles, right? There are people who collect spoons. There are all kinds of interests. All these are the different tribes that now exist today. And so, the challenge of Defining yourself is going to be really critical. But an easy way to help that process is to ground yourself solidly. Identity starts first with you, your sense of self. Your sense of self. But your sense of self must not be a sense of selfishness. Right? A sense of self is telling me, giving me a secure knowledge of who I am. If I have that secure sense of self, I am not going to be subject to peer pressure. Not because all my partners are smoking weed, I have to smoke weed. Not because